Hello everyone, and today we're going to take a look at Windows on ARM and Windows on Raspberry Pi, talk a little bit more about it, demo some apps, and talk about what's changed since the uh, last version or the last video I made. Now, obviously, for those who don't know, Windows on ARM is sort of a new thing Microsoft has been doing. It's not really new. They've done it in the past before, but this is the first time it's actually at mainstream, where they've ported full Windows onto the ARM architecture, uh, kind of like Windows RT, if you remember that. But instead, they actually implemented x86 emulation and support. Now, a lot of people keep asking, why would you do this? Why would you want this? Now, the answer is really the x86 emulation. I mean, why else would you want something like this? It's native in Windows and it works and it works really well. And I'll, I'll show a little bit more about that and explain about it later. Uh, the one issue that a lot of people will say is why not just use Linux? Why not use Exegear? Why not use Wine? You know, that kind of thing. The problem is Exegear and Wine, and especially to get it to run on ARM, not only are you going to be translating from x86 to ARM and vice versa, you're also going to have to run it on a Linux environment, which, you know, you have to simulate a Windows environment in Linux and all that. It's, it's so much overhead. Uh, by the time you get to run anything, it's going to be ridiculously slow. And if you don't believe me, go try Exegear. Don't get me wrong, Exegear is a great app. It runs slow as hell on the Raspberry Pi, to the, so it's not very useful unless you're using it for light applications. Whereas this, you could actually run full-blown normal Windows apps like I'm about to show you now. And that's kind of the advantage to this. And not to only mention running full-blown Windows and full-blown Windows apps, you also have the ability to use multi-core support, which is something that Exegear lacks uh, as far as I'm aware. And so, you know, you're, you're, be, you're going to be able to run Windows, you're going to be able to use multi-core support, and eventually when the drivers get ported over and everything is sorted out with the UEFI and all of that, it should run pretty well. It should, you know, the CPU is not the limiting factor in this device, as I'll, I'll show you guys later. It's more or less the fact of drivers and, the, and that we're not able to actually get proper SD card drivers and stuff, which is what, what is limiting this from running at, at basically full speed. So, yes, this can be usable, but it'll take some time and some work. Like I said in the last video, if you have any know-how or insight on how to code, or you know how to code drivers, do take a look at the thread and link description below. Now, I'm surprised as what this can even do for how limited it is. It doesn't have any GPU drivers, no sound drivers, no networking, nothing. But there's already been people who've been able to get apps running on this. Like Nova Spirit Tech showed Office 2010 running on this. And ETA Prime has also ran uh, ZNES, which is an NES emulator. And that surprised me the most because there is no graphics drivers. And the fact that that emulator was even able to run at basically full speed from what I can see was pretty impressive. And I'll have a card up on screen to both of their videos and links in the description so you guys can go check them out. Because both of them did very good overview videos as well. But yeah, uh, let's move on to actually talking about how this works. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in detail in a minute. Here's a little demo of me from the first time around I booted this up. I installed Firefox and Eclipse. Now, Eclipse took forever to load, but that's not the part of the fact of this is emulated. I think the biggest factor about this is the fact that it's being bottlenecked by the SD card drivers, as you can see here. Especially when I do anything whatsoever, it will instantly bog up to 100% usage and the whole system will slow down. But once you have an app running, it's pretty smooth. It's not that bad, as you can see here. If I was to put it side by side to a PC, you know, you just think that maybe this is just a low end laptop, for instance. And as you can see, I could close the app and open it just fine. And here's Eclipse running. Now, here's the interesting thing about Eclipse. My friend suggested to run this as just sort of a joke to see if it work, and it does, which surprised me the most. And it, I think it shows how much work Microsoft has put into this. So not only the fact that Eclipse itself run, and remember, if for those of you who have used Eclipse, you know that you need the Java JDK, which is a Java development uh, kit, that to run Eclipse. That's also installed, by the way. 32-bit version of both the Java development kit and Eclipse are both running on the same system, which is interesting. And that's the, that's the thing I want to point out, is that Wine cannot do this. Exegear cannot do this. And this is why this is, it fascinates me, because this is such a whole new world to be able to run something like this on such a, such a interesting little device. And I'd love to see more devices like this running Windows 10. You know, imagine if the Ordroid, especially the, uh, I think it's the Ordroid XU4, which is an 8-core um, Samsung Equinox or something like that uh, processor. Imagine that running this. It would be a hell of a lot faster and it'd be able to utilize all eight cores compared to using Wine or Exegear on Linux. So as you can see, that's uh, pretty much it for clips. I'm also going to show the next clip here 
Okay, so the next program I go ahead and open here is 7-Zip. And now, I didn't edit any of these. This is in real time, by the way, so you guys can get an idea of how programs run. And the only issue that I seem to have is that, again, the disk is being pegged whenever I try to open any app. So if we were able to sort out those SD card drivers, this would definitely run a lot smoother. As you can see, 7-Zip does open up normally, like if you were to run it on a normal computer. Go ahead and open up the about window here. It takes a little bit of time to figure out what it wants to do, but it loads. It works. And the next program I do want to try is uh, Office 2016, which I just opened up Word. I didn't want to go through and open up the whole Office suite because that would take forever. But as you can see, it does work. It opens up. I, I'm able to make a new document like so. So let me just get rid of this dialog box here. Just open up a new document. It'll take a couple seconds to load. As you can see, yeah, this is Word 2016 running on Windows 10, running on the Raspberry Pi. Now, like I said, obviously all of this is far from perfect, but I think the biggest factor in, in why a lot of people want this is this, this sort of emulation. This is not something that we've seen in any other operating system before, and it's definitely interesting to see Microsoft take this approach. So, again, like I said, this is very interesting. It's still in the early stages, so if you want to try it out, do be warned. It will take a lot of time, and you may not even get it to work, which is the issue. But if once it does work, it does work decently well. And again, if any of you guys know anybody or if you're, you yourself know how to code any sort of drivers or anything, do chip in in the GitHub thread in the link below. And uh, do check out Nova Spirit Tech and ETA Prime who have also done overview videos on this subject. And until then, I hope you all enjoy your day and I'll catch you in the next one.